Hello and welcome to episode 15 of the Kubuntu podcast. Oh, I'm feeling pretty good and pretty excited today. Hope you're uh, there watching us on the, on the live stream. As usual, I have my two compadres, mi amigos, um, Aaron Honey Cut and Ovidio Florin Chicken Hat. I mean, Bogdan. Aaron, hello, mate. How are you doing? Good. You, Rick? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good today. And uh, a video. We missed you last time, buddy. We really missed you. How are you today? Hola, Rick. <laughs> Hola, chico. Hola, chico. <laughs> uh, I'm exhausted. I've worked a lot. We had some server issues at work, but we fixed. I we uh, I fixed it eventually. But all okay. it took is all it took was one night and one day, but I fixed it. Yeah, well, the, that's but that's just how you roll, my man, isn't it? You know, at the end of the day, that's uh, that's the world of IT. You just got to keep fixing stuff. Yep. All right. So, um, well, it's great to have you back. We really missed you on the last show, and uh, and of course we had our guest Marius with us, and uh, you didn't get to ask him some cool questions and stuff like that. But uh, maybe we'll find out a bit more uh, about uh, what you've been up to over the last two months. Shortly, okay. Let me give uh, the listeners a quick a quick heads up and summary of what we've got going on uh, today in this week's show. So. Um, We've got uh, some user updates and user feedback uh, segment we're going to look at. We've got lots of news from the Kubuntu core development team. There's been a lot of action been going on in the background since we saw you last. And, um, of course, we've got our in-focus section um, where we'll spend some time looking at things in a little bit more detail. We've got uh, Kubuntu news coming up, general discussion and catch-up uh, as to what we've all been up to. And, of course, we've got... Uh, Aaron's uh, gaming section. So we're looking forward to that as well. So that's what we've got coming up on the show. So stick with us. But first of all, let's find out who's been doing what since we last saw them. So Aaron, uh, what have you been up to since we last, last time we saw you, my friend? I've been kicking all of your merges to the Kubuntu manual down. Like, <laughs> by a <laughs> yeah i was that was making me very unhappy actually i was thinking yeah, i'm not very happy about not only that but but because because you're a man of few words then your git review comments were rather terse <laughs> which was that went something like put it back <laughs> i'm very particular about the order of things sometimes somebody has to yeah, that's fair enough. That's fine. So I kind of like, yeah, that's true. I did have to sort of, um, what's the word? Uh, I had to kind of roll my enthusiasm back up for a moment and sort of think to myself, right, hang on a minute. Like, you know, Rick, whose project is this? You know, you're committing changes to uh, to his project. Does that mean you should just put them in because I say so? Because I wrote them, you should put them in. And of course, I mucked around with all your file structure and your directories and messed around with everything. And I got thought, what? How dare he revert my merges and revert my changes? <laughs> but then I thought to myself, I thought, oh, yeah, well, maybe the change log might need to be in the root file in the root directory and and so then I, so i made the changes and this that and the other which uh, so are you going to revert the last lot the last commit that i put yesterday or yeah are, are you happy with that one now i, I merged that one <laughs> but the previous one i took some stuff out of it for the activity section anyway okay that, cool, that cool. part was good i took that part took the good part and then kicked all the rest of my rubbish out into touch good yeah, stuff I did leave your credit on change log yeah no you did that's fair enough that's fine all right well look we'll um, we'll get back into a little bit more in uh, in the in focus se section uh because what we'll do is we will um, we'll spend some time talking about uh kubuntu documentation in the in focus and we can cover that a little bit more but uh aside the aside reverting my changes you naughty boy um what else have you been doing Uh, I've been pushing some changes to uh, grammar issues and typos and uh, fixes to a uh, magic device tool, I believe it's called on GitHub. 
Okay. That, it's a script that someone wrote for flashing Ubuntu touch devices and stuff like that. So you, it won't make it. You just run one strip and it's just do this or do this or do this. Just option selection. That's it. That's all you got to do with it. Uh, so I've been getting pretty active the last three days or four days on GitHub now. And now with the merges from the Kubuntu manual too. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Excellent. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So now um, uh, I'm not quite sure whether I should refer to you. I'm going to, so uh, I'm going to get uh, a video joined us this evening, as he normally does with uh, it comes sometimes with a, a little bit of wry comedy. So let me uh, use that uh, wry comedy now. So uh, what have you been up to? Crazy pants. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh the comedy Rick is referring to is uh, whenever I get into these meetings, I always choose a random whatever comes to mind nickname, and everybody is usually who's that? Who's that? Because I'm not turning on my microphone and I'm not turning on my webcam, and they don't see me. I'm I'm just sending them some messages like, "Who said that? Who's that person? Who's that guy? Why is he saying that?" And then I turn on my mic, and because I'm tired of typing, and then they see, "Oh, it's you." <laughs> yes so so you turned up today to this meeting in uh in crazy pants with what sounded like a, a bowl of chicken soup but um <laughs> for tea but uh what have you been up to anyway my friend since we saw you last what news from romania well lately i've been working on a few projects uh mainly I'm dockerizing some open source applications. I think I've also said that last time, but I'm still working on that. So, uh, you guys, do you guys know the tool that KD uses that that we use in KDE for code review? It's called Review Board. Yes. Um, yeah, I've done uh, a little bit with that with um, uh, Carlos on the um, Muon. Awesome. So, so I Docker container for it, and I'm working. I'm still working with that Docker container. I got some feedback from their community, and I'm working towards making it an official Docker image for them. And we are also using that uh, the the current state of the Docker image. We're using it at my workplace, so that's win win for everybody. I'm also making a docker image for agile fant which is an agile project management uh, tool okay and a, f a few other a few other tools uh i'm also working but i had to take a small break from on uh, fix my street to get it dockerized uh which we plan to use we we are a small group here in the city and we're trying to use that application for our city you, so that citizens can report uh, problems in the city. But I don't want to keep bragging about that application because so far it's not done and I keep, I keep bragging, hey, it's an awesome app and we, we're going to use it and right now I'm stuck with work. Like uh, like I said at the beginning, I for the past, I don't know, 40-something hours, I've been stuck with my head inside the server. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh well that's been keeping you busy for sure but the the docker the docker stuff sounds good and i know you've been working hard on that in the background you've been talking about that for a while and um i'm trying to get more and more into the devops realm and probably become a devop if i if i if you can actually name someone a devop okay so I'm trying to go into that direction and see what happens. But I like it, so... The most important thing is uh, is having fun, I think. You know, that, yeah. uh, that makes a, a big difference, doesn't it? That's, uh, uh, guys, uh, since uh, I'm still uh, talking, uh, yes. I, have, I have a couple of news for you. Uh, we have images in the audio feeds for the podcast i've just finished <laughs> setting that up oh fantastic okay what are they they're up on the website at kubuntu.org uh they're in the or in feed burner 
Yeah, they're a feed burner. I can. I suppose I ought to ask the question, or we ought to put out to the community out there. Does anybody know how to um, how to add this stuff onto iTunes? Because um, I don't think we're listed on iTunes, so we don't turn up in the um, Podbird application on the Ubuntu phone, which is a shame. Where's the video gone? It's varnished. It should show up on iTunes at some point. Oh, here he is. Crazy Pants is back. All right. Uh, I don't know. Just Flash just crashed. Uh, uh, one moment. Rick, you're sending uh, the wrong link for the live stream. Oh, okay. So um, for, for everybody to take note, the link is youtube.com slash C slash Kubuntu podcast slash live. Okay. So I'll just paste that in Telegram in case nobody else did so far. All right. And in Telegram and in our chat, in our public chat. <laughs> okay, cool. So. Let me just interject here for a moment and say that uh, for those of you that uh, if you want to come on down to uh, the Kubuntu podcast studio, you can do that right now. Um, you can come and join us uh, here in the studio. Uh, we're using big blue button and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, but of course, that means that you can come on down. You can join us in the chat room. We've got a few people uh, from the Kubuntu community. Let's say a shout out to uh, Jim and uh, Rick and guys that are there. And of course, here's Simon, who's turned up uh, with his camera. Uh, so here's another community member from the studio. Hello, mate. How are you? Good. How are you today? Yeah, really good. Really good. We're going to be talking a little bit more about you a little bit later on in the show, young man. Uh, but we're going to keep it secret and keep it safe. All right. And we'll all let right, some people right. know more about you. But but uh, yeah, so where those people that are up on uh, on you watching this on the live YouTube, um, uh, you can come and join us. I'm going to put the link in the chat here. Um, and also maybe if somebody can if I put the link in the chat here. One of you guys can copy this and put it into the live stream on YouTube so that uh, people can click on that if they want to come in and have a chat or ask questions, join the chat room. And um, the uh, we're in room one of our big blue button studio and the password to get in is welcome. And uh, you will indeed be very welcome. Now, whilst I'm on the note of big blue button, um, of course, uh, we've got uh, a sponsor section for Big Blue Button. So let me tell you a little bit about the Big Blue Button Studio. Um, those of you in the community who've come along to the uh, Kubuntu parties or any of the Kubuntu dojos, our training developer and uh, packaging training sessions, or indeed the uh, Kubuntu podcast that you're watching right now, you will know, uh, you'll have seen us using this uh, webcam conferencing studio with chat facilities, presentations, screen sharing, and all of that good stuff. Um, which is essentially uh, a, a live education environment. It's actually developed for schools. And uh, the project is called Big Blue Button, and it's developed by the Big Blue Button team. And uh, this uh, server that we're operating from has been um, gifted to us or sponsored to us by Fred Dixon and the team at BigBlueButton.org. And uh, we'd like you to go out and check out what they do. Uh, go and have a look. They've got some demo servers. You can go and play with your own Big Blue Button instance and see, uh, see what you can use it for. And uh, while you're there, give a shout out to Fred and the guys at Big Blue Button and let, us, let them know that you heard about it from us here in the, the crazy Kubuntu podcast show. All right. Rick, one, one small pause. Uh, Philip just launched a challenge for our listeners to count how many times Rick says good stuff. No, I don't <laughs> do that. Uh, so uh, I had a plan, and I, I told these, I told them uh, after the last show uh, that during this year's academy, we should I can bring some Romanian traditional Romanian drink. Uh, it's I don't know, 60% alcohol or something like that, maybe even more. <laughs> and uh, we're going to take a shot and listen. To, we're going to listen to all the podcasts and we're going to take a shot every time Rick says good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> oh, there's another shot. 
Yeah, raging, gla- raging glasses, gentlemen. Good stuff. <laughs> Simon can't do it. No. That should be a promo code. <laughs> It should actually. We definitely ought to do that. We ought to do that. I um I, I kind of deliberately used the good stuff word to um to replace awesome because everybody uses awesome and kind of like yeah it you know it's good but is it awesome? I'm not sure about that. So uh, but it's definitely good stuff. All right. <laughs> Let's get into the news section and find out what we've been going on. Hands up. Anybody got any Rick news? Rick has some news. Okay, I've got some news. All right, car. Gosh, I have to do all the talking. I have to do all the research. It should be called The Rick Show. <laughs> oh, did you just say, oh, geez, Aaron? <laughs> I did. Okay, raise your glass, young man. Good stuff. <laughs> okay right so let me tell you a little bit about news that's been going on since we saw you last so um kubuntu 1604.1 lts update has been released and uh, you'll see this uh, we put this out on 22nd of july and uh, this is basically a first point release update uh to our lts release uh, with some new improvements and some new additional features and you can check out that uh, the links are in the show notes um, but uh, you can also go and check out that news on the news section of kubuntu.org. And um, we've now got, uh, in fact, I'm going to hand over this to you. Didn't you just paste this in here, Aaron? Aaron? Um, which, which part? Plasma 5.7 uh, and yeah, App 1604. Plasma 5.7 and App 1604 pushed to, to Yaki. Uh, I don't think they've pushed the apps fully because they're thinking about just skipping it right to 1608 since the release is right around the corner. And then Qt 5.6.1 is pushed to Yaki. Okay. All right. So, well, we're going to talk a lot more about what's been going on in Yakity uh, in the developer update because we've got lots of feedback coming there on that as well and um so a little bit quiet in the kubuntu news section at the moment but uh do keep us informed if uh if you do come across any news okay good stuff (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna have a lot of fun with that now it is really gonna be gonna be fun Okay. All right. Yeah, so Rick is trying to read the, the script, and me and Aaron keep changing the script, and he's looking, What's happening? <laughs> yeah, and you're cutting and pasting and switching the lines up and down, and I'm thinking, Hang on, where did that bit just go? <laughs> <laughs> you crazy cats. I tell you, what are you doing? <laughs> it sounds like a Kubuntu party more than a I've got my crazy oh. pants on right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So, well, do you know what? <laughs> as soon as everybody's swapping the order of things, um, let's get right into elevator picks and see who's been playing with what software since we saw them last. So, first up, of you, what's your what's your elevator pick, my friend? What have you been using? What can you tell us about? So, every 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 one of us has, especially those. Uh, who especially the people who are working in software or with software or with humans or any, any human that's actually working. Uh, you have that, that specific moment when you're exhausted, you're tired, you can't sleep, but you, wanna, you still want to do something that doesn't require a lot of concentration. But you still want to do something b- b- before you go to bed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and for that application, uh, for that purpose, for me, I find that the best thing that I can find is to play a game of Spider Solitaire. <laughs> no, right? No laughs. Okay, no laughs. Okay, nobody, nobody gets. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, is that tumbleweed flowing across? Oh. The, oh, the street. Yeah, tumbleweed yeah, yeah something across. like that. Okay, <laughs> so uh, I. I find that specific game very relaxing and it doesn't take a lot of brain power and I can just, if I win, I win. If I lose, I lose. But it's, it's for me at least, it's perfect for uh, relaxing before I go to sleep. 
or whenever I'm too tired to actually do anything, but I and I don't want to play some complicated game that actually requires me to think. So I'm just opening that game and I'm moving cards left to right. Uh, luckily, KD has among has a whole category of software dedicated to games. And one of these games is K-Patience. K-Patience is a game stack. It's an application that has all kinds of uh, card games. It has Solitaire. It has... Uh, uh, let, let, let me just open it, actually, and tell you a few. Well, actually, I have it translated right now. So uh, I'm going to try to do a live translation. Grandpa, Grandpa's Clock, Free Cell, Golf... Klondike, Mod 3, 48, Spider Solitaire, uh, Plain Old Solitaire, which is called Klondike here. Uh, if someone gives me presenter, I can actually show the application and move a couple of cards around. Rick, should I show mm. this to people? Sure. Uh, hold on a moment. Let me think about... Click the button that okay. gives me presentation. Give me a second. Give me a second. I just need to... Cause and you... please don't tell me I have to re-log into this application so I can present stuff to people. No, this is Big Blue Button, dude. Relax. Here we go. Here it's coming right Share out. Your you? desktop. There you go. You have got the presentation. Hold on a minute. I'm just going to switch the uh, presentation meeting over so that uh, now we've got a better view of the shared desktop. So, if you... Hopefully this will work, actually. Might not record it, but we'll see. Okay, well, go ahead and try anyway. See how you get on. Uh, I'm trying. Do you guys see anything? Uh, always trust content from this publisher. Run, because I'm trusting Big Blue Button. And apparently I'm now sharing my desktop. Do you guys see what I'm showing? Not yet, but we might. We may do. Maybe it will come. Here it comes. It tells me that I'm sharing my desktop. I see some weird lines on my desktop. Okay. So, come on, come on, tell me, tell me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't have it on my rec don't have it on my rec on my recording desktop. But hey, that's fine. It. It, 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 it the see. Well, the most important thing is: does does Aaron have it? Um, have you got? You don't. I don't, how, I don't know how Jim sees it if I don't. Uh, there's another window if you switch around the uh, layouts. There's a sh share workspace window that you should be able to look at. Nope, I just have presentation nope, nope. meeting on. He's screen it now. Well, Java is only for sharing it, not for you. Well, well, I can see, I can see it. In, I can see my screen in a, in this window. So I'm, I know I'm sharing it, but okay. Well, let's just carry on and carry on with yeah. that, and uh, t just give us plenty of narrative as you talk through what you're showing us, because we'll need that for the audio podcast too. Uh, so. Basically, when you open the application, it gives you a choice to choose what game you want to play. And you have a bunch of pictures here that uh, each one has a template of how the cards are arranged for the, that specific game. And you should just choose the one you want. For example, I always choose Spider Solitaire with a single suit because I don't want to think too much. I want to relax. And I... I, now I have the game opened, and I just start dragging cards around. And I just move, hey, 4 goes over 5, 5 goes over 6, I, I don't have a 7, I don't have a 9 or something, and I just keep moving them around because it's a very relaxing game for me. But this is just one of them. It, but this application also has uh, clues. It can show you a clue, hey, if, if I'm stuck, I don't see where I can move. It also has demonstration mode. And it also has an option which is very useful, but sometimes it's annoying. Uh, it has a, a solver. So basically what this means is it runs, it checks all the cards because the game already knows what cards are where. It checks all the cards and it knows from the current state of the cards uh, 
will I have valid moves enough so I can win the game? And if yes, it just shows me in the status bar, this game can be won. If for some reason I moved some cards and uh, I can't go back and it knows I'm going to get stuck eventually and I can't win this game, it's going to tell me this game cannot be won anymore. And then I cheat and then I click the undo button until I can see that the game can be won and, ch and choose a different move. Because, yeah. Cheat codes. Cheats. So that's that's my <laughs> cheat. <laughs> that's my small application that I wanted to show everybody and tell everybody about right now. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. Jim, what did you catch that? Long. That's four times. <laughs> Jim is actually counting. Be, Jim is actually we're counting. Be, we're going to be smashed at Academy. <laughs> I got to get a bigger bottle with me. <laughs> Good. Um, okay. So, um, Aaron, um, what have you got uh, in... Uh, in uh, this month's elevator picks, I'm gonna pick Snapcraft. Snapcraft, okay. It's a tool to make snaps on Ubuntu base distros. Okay, is this is this a command line tool? Uh, yeah. Can okay. I not count command line tools? Yes, of course you can. Absolutely, you can pick anything you like. Uh, Useful to pick, uh, pick, uh, uh, you know, well, uh, no, you can pick anything you like, it doesn't matter, whatever, whatever the uh, tool is that, that you can tell us a bit more about it. All right, so this is for making snaps or snappy packages, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, it's if you're familiar with get, like get init initial, like creating the directory and the files and stuff, Snapcraft has the same command option. So it makes the uh, Snapcraft YAML, I don't know if you say it right, Y-A-M-L file that has all the placeholders for everything you need to make the snap to get you started. And then when you run Snapcraft itself, it starts pulling from that, running stuff from that script, that file, to pull down all the packages and run the commands and stuff that need to be made to make the snap. And then you can run snap clean, Snapcraft clean to empty everything out to start fresh rather than in case you have issues when you're trying to rebuild it. Okay. It's really and uh, how long have you been how long have you been uh, using that for now then? I've been messing around with it for about three or four days. And, and the docs and stuff are on snapcraft.io Okay. About it. Okay, we'll get we'll get a link in the show notes for that. Um, snapcraft.io so people can go and take a look at that <clears throat> so it sounds like you've been having quite a lot of fun with that have you actually packaged anything up um, kind of new what do you do when you've packaged something up How, where do you get it launched to or put to um, by decent to uh, backslash snap backslash bin that's in the uh, basically it's under the root directory and then you can run that that binary to actually open the snap. There's some snaps that can make desktop files, so you can search for them in the menu, uh, like K Runner or something, or uh, Kickoff, anything like that. Okay, that's cool. You've already got another fan because, of course, Simon, who's here with us, um, he just said he likes messing around with Snapcraft. Uh, you've been using this tool as well, then, uh, Simon. What are your thoughts? Um, I really, really like this tool. I've, I'm actually a contributor to Snapcraft. I've contributed a, a couple of patches. Um, but I really, really like something like you, how you can use clean build and it will create, it will spin up an LXD container for you, a fresh LXD container, then install the dependencies and then it'll build it inside of that. I really, really like that function. Cool, cool. Yeah, that sounds that sounds pretty cool. So, well, yeah. we've got some links to that in the show notes, Snapcraft.io, and of course, uh, um, 
encourage people to go and have a play with that. Uh, and I know we've, I know some of the developers and uh, the other people in the Kubuntu community have been talking about it. And there is a lot of energy and a lot of communication going on there around that particular tool. So nice one, Aaron. And um, you know what I'm going to say next, don't you? Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, um, well, for me, I have been, uh, I've been watching quite a lot of media activity around the tool Critter. Um, now, of course, Critter is a cute based application and it's available in uh, the Discovery Software Center under Kubuntu. You can install it really easily. And um, uh, for Christmas, I got given a graphics tablet and a pen, a Wacom graphics tablet and a pen, which I kind of, I mean, I, I can't draw anything at all. I'm, I'm utterly useless at anything artistic, um, but I really would love to be able to do drawings or paintings um so i thought i would start experimenting with critter just to kind of give it a go and see what it would be like and um so i did a little bit of experimentation and so far i've really only messed around with the pens and the pencils that are in there you can get pencils and uh, all kinds of different grade pencils and stuff that you can use with your tablet now the first thing to say is that using this with my Wacom graphics tablet has been absolutely fantastic um, because it it's completely pressure sensitive. It works. Uh, and I'm surprised how well I've been able to get on with hand eye coordination when working on the laptop with my hand on the tablet. But that's worked really, really well. But I've had some really good success at actually doing some really interesting paintings. So I... Uh, the technique that I've been using is it's not really drawing, it's tracing. So this is it's tracing and colouring in, sophisticated tracing and colouring in. But what I've been doing is getting... Isn't that a five-year-old's job? It is a five-year-old's job, but I'm uh, but but the results that I've been able to get. So, so we have a military aircraft here in the UK that uh, was built by the same company that built the Lancaster bomber. It's called the Avro Vulcan, the Vulcan bomber, a big delta wing-shaped bomber. So I took a picture of that. I got a picture of that rather, and then I used layers in Critter to first of all produce a sketch. Um, and then to do all the coloring and then to do all the lighting and all the highlighting and everything else. And by the time I'd finished, I had what I would call an almost photorealistic illustration of this Vulcan bomber uh, that looks like a drawing or a painting, but, but, it's, but the quality of the imagery is almost photo quality. Um, and it, I have no artistic technical skill or techniques at all but that tool has just made it by using the simple tools that it presents to you and using multiple layers in the image like you would in gimp and then using the photograph as a background and then tracing and coloring and then adding shades and opacity and so on and so forth hey presto i produced some really great results uh, so if you haven't had a look at critter yet and gone and had a play with it i really encourage you to go and load it from the discovery center and play with it it is an astonishing tool really really good rick if i may add my experience with Krita, please i yes. pronounce Krita. okay and and i also heard the main developer pronouncing it Krita, and yeah uh i made my wedding invitations in krita oh okay uh, i don't have one at hand to show it to you but yeah i used krita and Gink gimp a little bit because i needed some things that krita couldn't do back then now you see i'm very disappointed really because um i haven't seen one of those wedding invitations why, well, why Rick, is that? <laughs> uh, Rick uh, I got married before I knew you, so I'm sorry, sorry, Rick. I'm already married. I can't be with you anymore. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Come on. <laughs> 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 and Aaron is the one who's trying to stop all these funny moments. I'm trying to stop it. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just letting Rick down very softly and smoothly and telling him, I'm sorry that we can't be together. But I have a family, you have a family, I'm sorry, Rick. Okay. Maybe in some other life. 
All right, don't worry. Yeah, relax, crazy <laughs> pants. It's cool. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's move from this into the uh, in focus section then. But uh, links to all of those um, elevator picks that we picked this week are in the show notes. So you can go and check them out, find out more about them. Okay. So let's talk about uh, docs.ubuntu.org for a moment. Um, so, Aaron. We've been having some activity on the uh, Kubuntu documentation. What's been going on, and um, and what uh, what what can we expect in the future? Well, right now, me and well, mostly you, I've just merged the stuff, uh, a packaging guide into sixteen ten stocks, uh -huh. and an activity section into the docs as well. And then I'm sure you probably have some more stuff up your sleeve to merge. Well, I do. Yeah, I've been working on some stuff in the background. It had been, um, it had been, uh, uh, it had been taking me quite a long time to get uh, to get the builds working correctly for the documentation. A long a while ago, I wrote a section on activities. Um, so this is KDE activities in Kubuntu, and which there there really is just not enough focus on what activities activities are how you can use them and how cool they are um and also there was there's next to nothing documented about them so of course people don't experiment with them so the first job was to add a section just a small section about activities how to activate them and uh, i think in the in the docs there's now a small section just explains how to get started how to create one and tells you a little bit about what they do um but they're a really really cool feature of our of kubuntu so we added that in and uh and of course to support the kubuntu dojo which is this monthly training program that we have uh that basically develops packages and uh gets people into um into uh, into packaging then um we um uh, a video has completely thrown me by so by holding that at the camera. I don't know what he's trying to show me, whether it's the, the time or anything. You, you just want to, why don't you just mess with my show notes as well while you're there? <laughs> no, oh, no my phone rang. My phone rang and the people started saying in the show, in the comments that phones on silent. Yeah, phones on silent. And I showed them there, it's on silent. You happy now? Oh, look. Uh, and that and that completely synced me out and took my my thing away and I have no idea what I was saying now. Anyway, the short story is is that um, so we're working on that together. Aaron and I are um, working on uh, splitting out a sixteen oh four LTS set of documentation, uh, which will go with the sixteen oh four builds, and we're working on documentation for sixteen ten. Uh, so we're going to uh, round that out. We're going to introduce a Kubuntu Packages Guide as well as the Kubuntu Users Guide. And that Kubuntu Packages Guide will be used as the supporting documentation for the Kubuntu Dojos that happen on this four-month cycle that we go around. So that means that uh, as we bring new developers on and bring uh, new developers into the community, we should have a, a good up-to-date set of docs that people can use to get started and get involved and of course we will support that with the dojo and the videos as as and the videos as well so um so that's looking really good and um and we've got all of that on your github haven't we uh, aaron can you just tell people a little bit about that uh about the github yes please yeah where can they find it uh it's oh, that did not work well. It's on github.com slash a honey bun slash kubuntu manual, kubuntu dash manual. And it'll be in the show notes under the in focus section. Excellent. <clears throat> Just clearing my throat a little. And uh, good stuff. Excellent. Now you're just ruining it. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You've not, you've not drunk enough yet. Over here in, we, in Britain, we have a saying, I, I, I'll know when you've drunk enough because you'll start feeling hungry and you'll want a kebab with hot chili sauce. <laughs> Rick wasn't at last year's academy. He knows nothing of drinking. <laughs> Rick hasn't tried my Romanian drink yet. 
<laughs> that, I tried that, that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody tried that. Uh, during CERN, the Italians loved it. You don't know that you're drunk yet until you start drinking. Imagine wine. this, Aaron, Aaron. During CERN, people actually had a second drink of it. Oh, God. And there were there were some that actually even have a had a fifth drink. Oh, <laughs> so some people actually like that thing. Were those the people that got wheeled back to the hotel in the baggage trolley? <laughs> well, kind of actually carried by three more other drunk people, <laughs> by, by three <laughs> other drunk people drunk carrying a drunk. That does not sound. Uh, good. But they, they all made it. They all made it to bed. Uh, me, 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 and Jim will come across. Me and Jim of them will come across and, and, and give the bottle a, 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 a. We'll have a good go at a bottle of that. I'm sure we can do a lot of damage to your Romanian um, ker. What is it? What's it called? Kerosene. <laughs> kerosene. No. Uh, <laughs> actually, it depends on uh, how many times was it redistilled. Uh, it's called either Tsuika or Polinka. Tsuika or Palinka? Oh, it sounds yeah, pretty what, what good. I bring, what I, what I will bring will be Tsuika. And that's uh, uh, lighter than Palinka. <laughs> oh, Jim's, Jim's bailed out in the chat room. He's not coming. He said, he said Palinka, I'm off. That's poison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. Well, someone knows go. what I'm talking about. <laughs> Grab the bottle, guys. Good stuff. Oh, <laughs> why right. does he keep saying thirteen dollars? Oh, he's he's counting them up. <laughs> it's a dollar a shot, I guess. <laughs> so, all right. So, so that's what's been going on with the documentation manual. Now, of course, I was just talking a moment ago about the Kubuntu Dojo. Now, I want to introduce somebody uh, who's uh, here here in the studio with us today, and uh, his name is Simon. Simon Quigley, and uh, uh, you can uh, switch your mic on, Simon. And um, hey, hello, Hi. mate. Thank you for joining us. Hi, how are you? Yeah, really good, really good. Um, of course, we've got a little bit of a celebration today because, um, uh, Simon, you just achieved the status of a Kubuntu Ninja yeah. about two days ago. Yeah. Fantastic news. That was yesterday, That's but... Really good. Yeah. Yeah, so now, of course, uh, I remember uh, you've been coming along to uh, the Kubuntu dojos. You've been to uh, the last couple, and I know you were there at the last one. Uh, and, of course, you, uh, joined, you that was kind of your entry vector in some ways, and you joined the yellow, the uh, Kubuntu Yellow Bells uh, group on the launch pad, yeah? Yep. I kind of joined. I don't remember if it I, – I think it was the dojo that – I then went and joined the Yellow Belts team, and I kind of got some help from people on IRC. But I then got some a bunch of merge proposals in, or pull requests, whatever you want to call them. Um, I got a bunch of those submitted. I worked with the people on IRC, and eventually, that's I earned Ninja. Yeah. So I mean, so I mean that journey then in the first instance. So I mean, you've done this really rapidly, which obviously is a testament to uh, to well, testament to how much uh, time and dedication that you've been willing to spend at this. But I mean, it's been really quite a rapid journey for you. Uh, two or two or three weeks has it taken you to from from getting involved with the yellow belts to? I think um, I think from looking at it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it was less than two weeks from joining with Yellow Belts that I became a ninja. Maybe, yeah, I think, like um, Aaron said in, in the chat, maybe one and a half weeks, something around there. Yeah. And um, and obviously, so, I mean, what, what, what was your experience with getting involved with the developer community and the IRC, how how did you how did you find that? Did you find that welcoming? Was it easy to get along? Were they helpful? Or was it you know? Tell us a little bit about that experience. It was extremely welcoming. Um, you know the the packaging experiences I've had beforehand. It's been usually just pointed to a bug if it's not a specific project and it's just with packaging and getting experience with that sort of thing. I haven't. I didn't do much of that before, although I, I've read the policies. Um, I've read the Debian policy manual probably two times now. 
and I, I it was it was just it it really was welcoming because the experience I've had before really wasn't I really didn't have anybody welcoming me in and kind of showing me what to do and I've had some help from from a lot of people on IRC that I wouldn't I probably wouldn't have been able to find elsewhere well I probably yeah. would but it I it's the it's the first time that I've been introduced to a community of people that that would be able to help me with that sort of thing yeah and that and that's really good to hear and it's really it, it it's really important and valuable feedback because obviously in the kubuntu community <clears throat> we're reliant on the things that people do kubuntu is a bureaucracy and and it really is you can literally just rock up get hands on with things and start doing things and uh, and the community you know the reason why i would say Kubuntu, 100% friendly computing, is for that exact reason. Because it doesn't matter whether you want to do documentation or graphic design, make videos, edit podcasts, join us on podcasts, get involved in packaging, do development, play around with DevOps. There are uh, people here who are already doing that kind of stuff, and there are routes to get involved. Um, you know, you can come down to the Kubuntu parties, which happen once a month, just come and hang out with a few of us. We use this uh, setting that we've got here. Hang out, have a good time, have a laugh. You can come to the Kubuntu dojos, where we'll do some video training. We'll go through the packaging notes. We'll do things in screen share. And of course, then we've got the tools like IRC and so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, that's really great, really great news. And I know that uh, already you've, you've, you know, committed a lot of uh, really, really good work. And, um, and uh, you know, um, we've got some developer feedback in a moment, but a point I'm going to make actually whilst uh, I've got you here and I'm speaking to you directly is that in the developer feedback segment that we had ahead of this show today, um, the developers were talking about you. Um, and they were talking about, you know, the efforts that you've made and the work that you've done, um, you know, and, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, that that's really, really good that you've been able to make that um, that impact so quickly. And I know Clive Joe, who's one of the developers from the team has been working for a while, you know, he was talking about both you and Rick Mills and saying, you know, thanks for your excellent work and all the effort that you've put in. It's really moved things forward. So great job, Simon. Well done. Thank you. Okay. All right. So um, let's just get into the next section for a moment and uh, we will uh, bimble along and move along quite quickly. But before we do that, we have to make mention to our second sponsor in our second sponsor segment. Aaron is responsible for this great work in getting these guys involved with us. And I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, in just a moment about these. But first of all, big shout out and thank you to Linode. Um, they've provided us with an awesome virtual private server. And um, it's got super fast SSDs, uh, high availability data connection and top notch support. Now, uh, we've been able to work out a sponsorship for the server. Well, not we. Aaron has been able to work out a sponsorship for the server. And um, and that's been really, really good stuff. And you've done a really good job there. Uh, so um, go and check out their website. Go and, uh, you can find out about the links to that in our show notes. So you can instantly deploy uh, a Linode cloud ser server and get up and running in just a few seconds with uh, your own choice of uh, Linux distributions. Of course, we'd recommend uh, Kubuntu or Ubuntu or Debian. And, uh, and of course, you get SSD storage, 40 gigabit network, Intel E5 processors. So a big shout out to Linode and thank you very much for working with us. Just to let you not know what's been going on with that server, um, since then and uh, this really starts off our kubuntu developer feedback section uh, so since getting that server we've now been able to uh, get that set up and there has been so much compute power on that unit that they've given us that uh, yofel one of our uh, other developers in the team has actually divided that up by implementing lxd containers on that Linode box. And uh, so we've been able to uh, carve off a, a subset of that and hand that to one of our ninjas who needed a, uh, a packaging machine to actually package and build on. So that's 
already being put to immediate use. The other thing that we've been working on in the background is uh, the Kubuntu continuous integration, the KCI, uh, Kubuntu KCI system, um, which is uh, using Jenkins. And uh, we've been able to use another of the containers from the Linode box to add, uh, add an additional slave to our Jenkins machine. Uh, now, what that means is that with this resource, it means that the development team can build one tree level dependency at once, which is about 100 packages. So now on our KCI system, we can build about 100 packages, get them all um, worked through the system and packed, and that takes about an hour now. Um, so that's made a big, big difference. And we've still got enough capacity left on that Linode box to be able to provide other ninjas with LXD containers for doing packaging in if they if they need that and uh, so again come and ask for for ninjas that might be watching this like yourself Simon and other people uh, if you need one of those uh, one of those tools or one of those LXD containers to do some work in just put a shout out on IRC and we can kick you out okay right <clears throat> So let's get back into the Kubuntu developer feedback. Um, I've been talking for a little bit too long, so I'm just going to see whether I can uh, hand this over to one of my co-hosts. So uh, how about you, crazy pants? Do you want to uh, chop through some of these um, developer feedback notes? I could, I think. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure because I've been working on the site and on uh, the feeds. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. More good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Keep counting, Jim. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good I, stuff. I, I see his he 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 changed currencies again. <laughs> Jim says, "Oh come on." <laughs> All right. Okay. 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 So, um, well, I wrote these notes, so I I'm conscious of the fact that I do an awful lot of talking, and um, well, we got used to it. You did. Okay. All right. So, well, we bring some uh, some uh, palinka and some gaffer tape to Academy. Let's just say <laughs> I, I donate the guy who or woman who invented the mute button now quite a bit. <laughs> what? Love that pen. Listen, you you never get an awkward silence with me. <laughs> there there has been a few. I remember I edit the show. Oh, okay. 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 So well, I probably do that deliberately. You know, it's very difficult working in a in a, a developer setting with IT folk because you have to deliberately leave enough space so that somebody else will start talking. But the trouble is with developers, they sometimes just don't. They just refuse. I sit in my development meeting with my team of eight eight software devs, and I'll I'll put this deliberate pause where I wait to see if somebody will fill the space and they don't very often and I end up just having to fill the space so anyway never mind enough waffle and uh and rhetoric and uh that sort of things let me tell you what uh, we got back waffle? in the waffle? development why why waffles uh it's a colloquial a colloquialism um all right, so let me tell you what we got back from the Kubuntu developers. For Yakety, we've got Qt 5.6.1, and we've got Frameworks and Plasma 5.7.2 and Application 6.0.3 are almost done. 16. In Yakety. 16, sorry, 16.04.3, almost done in Yakety. So that means we're now looking for testers uh, to come and do the, uh, come and download and use the beta build and test from the daily builds. Now, at the moment, I was talking to Yofel as well, and he was saying that they're hoping and looking forward to actually being able to work on applications 6.08. But they're a little bit dependent at the moment on some upstream merges uh, for things like uh, PIM, the PIM packages and stuff like that from KDE. But watch this space. We'll have more news on that as we go forward. Um, now, those of you... We, who are should, we should add a link for testers. Where should they go? In order mm. to actually help, we need a link for them to and give them a link. We can um, we can put a link to uh, the CD, the daily build CDs and DVD image ISO images in the show notes. Um, perhaps add uh, add a link in there for us for that. Um, and uh, so you can go to the show notes and uh, click that link, and you'll do that. 
for those people that are currently on the Zinio release, I know there's been quite a lot of interest since the YouTube video went out about Plasma 5.7.2. Um, that has moved a little bit further forward, but there's still quite a lot to be done in backports to achieve this. But uh, it's something that the Ninja team are working on. So, uh, so watch this space and hopefully we'll have more news on that as well. Um, I mentioned uh, the uh, the new slaves for the Kubuntu automated build system, the continuous integration system, the Kubuntu CI. Um, now, Yofel has been doing a lot of work on that, along with uh, the other ninjas in the team, uh, fixing loads and loads of stuff. And if you uh, if you're in the Kubuntu Devel channel, you can see uh, the KCI system reporting into IRC that this build has been fixed, that build has been fixed. I've been watching the activity this week um, on IRC and seen it been really busy there. Um, but um, a lot of that uh, is uh, thanks to Linode with the additional slaves, which means that we can build things much more quickly and we can, uh, we, we've got more capacity to build things. Um, the next stage that Yofel's going to be working on is to get the build jobs organized and in order and working properly. Now, um, what we've also done is dropped the automation build of the 32-bit builds from the CI. So we're just focusing on x86 64 builds now now that doesn't mean that uh, the 32-bit builds of kubuntu will not be available they are going to continue to be available as i understand it up until uh, kubuntu 1804 at least there will be 32-bit builds it just means that we don't have to worry about conflicting dependencies and things like that in uh, in the kci system and we can focus just on automating the 64-bit builds for that um so uh, Yovel said to mention that uh, one of the things they did run into a very interesting error that uh, the techies out there will probably enjoy, which was that uh, we set Jenkins up running this Linode slave and uh, it got so much compute power available to it that what it tried to do was it tried to open 20 concurrent Git connections to KDE to download uh, packages and begin building them and uh, was KDE promptly shut the door because, of course, uh, there's only there's a connection limit of five concurrent connections to KDE. So uh, that that was an interesting challenge and not something we've had before. So really, really good to see that we've uh, got, you know, quite a, 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 a decent build system now. So that's good. <clears throat> Now, um, Yofu said he's good. they're going to continue to work on the stable CI builds and they're going to get, uh, next step is to get a set of working build configurations. Um, now, there's been a lot of challenges because, of course, as, as we noted last month, we'd moved back from uh, Debian's Alioth archives back to Launchpad and putting everything in Git on Launchpad. And there's been a huge amount of work to set that up. But the reason, the key reason for that was to make uh, the system more accessible so that uh, people like Simon and uh, Rick Mills, who I'll mention in a moment, um, the, these, uh, the new ninjas to the team so that we can bring them on board uh, more quickly and we can get access to the repositories more quickly and more easily uh, so that they can use their launchpad accounts to uh, to commit changes and and contribute to kubuntu and that's working really really well now and uh, and has removed some of the barriers so that's quite a win as well now, as I mentioned earlier on, we were talking to Simon um, just in the In Focus section about becoming a Kubuntu ninja. Um, but uh, we had somebody else who also joined the, the dojo a while ago, and that was Rick Mills. He came along uh, to uh, the first dojo, I think, and he's also been in and around the community for a long time in the background, working on packaging and developing his, uh, his skills and, and getting to know people. And... Um, um, he was uh, awarded uh, Kubuntu Ninja uh, about a month ago. So uh, good stuff. We'll drink to that. Well done, uh, Rick. Well done, Rick Mills. Congratulations, mate. And welcome aboard to the team. Uh, and as I said earlier on, I'll mention it again just because Clive Joe asked me to. Clive Joe said, put a big shout out to the two new ninjas. Many thanks for the excellent work and efforts that you've made so far. Really rewarding. And uh, we appreciate it. All of us, every one of us appreciate the effort that you put in. So well done, guys. Thank you very much. As always, we're always desperate for um, people to come and test Kubuntu 
to give us feedback, not just, uh, you know, test it. And yeah, it's great that it's working, but we want you to find things that aren't working, find updated packages, things that need to be new packaged, packaged and report them as bugs on Launchpad. Tell us about the things that you want us to build into your operating system. Uh, do that via the bugs, uh, bugs mechanism on Launchpad. And then uh, obviously we and the team can get involved in improving things and making Kubuntu, uh, you know, the, the best uh, KD based operating system that there is available and um, now of course uh, what we've also been asked to work on and um, maybe uh, some of those watching this in the live stream or on Google Plus can give us some feedback is um, we'd like to run a bug crush so uh, a bug squashing party uh, so that we can go through Launchpad get the bug triage stuff up to date um, find out uh, what needs fixing, what doesn't need fixing, get some patches together and so on and so forth. And, uh, and we could really do with some help um, to get uh, a bug squashing party organized. So if, uh, if, if you fancy, um, if you fancy setting up a party, we'll, uh, we'll certainly help with a big button, big blue button studio and the video conferencing. And, and I'll be certainly happy to come down and talk a load of cobblers and say good stuff every time somebody fixes a bug. Uh, but what we need is somebody to lead up on that. So if uh, you fancy, um, running a, uh, a bug squishing party for Kubuntu, then, uh, give us a shout out on IRC, Google plus, come and find us wherever. And, uh, we can tell you more about how to do that. Regarding okay. that, whatever, regarding that, whatever, I've just updated the contact page and added the support IRC as the support, uh, telegram link. Oh, okay. Fantastic. All right. So, well, check out kubuntu.org, the website. We, we're adding to that all the time with ways that you can communicate with us. You can you can get connected straight into IRC. I'll tell you more about that in the show a little bit later on. Just, um, just so everybody knows, we, we, yes, we actually need a whole website in order to tell you how you can get in touch with us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Okay. <coughs> all right. Aaron, yeah, are you right. ready, my man? What yeah. news from the gamers' corner of Kubuntu land? What news, my friend? I think it was, what's his name? S-O-E-E -E on IRC, I think his name is Martin. Told me Zoe. That, Zoe uh, told me that uh, Life is Strange got released on Linux now, and episode one was free. So... Here's my disclaimer of how you say curse words that some people might not like to hear a little bit. Oh, okay. This okay. is a par parental advisory, is it? Yeah. Oh, this thing's full. Wait, wait, wait. Isn't Simon a minor? Well, no, he's an, no, he's not a minor. He's a ninja. Well, if his parents didn't want him to be exposed, they wouldn't let him on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Blame the parents in this situation. Yeah, 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 Simon. Go be Amish or something. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's terrible. That's no, terrible. no internet. Anyone. I'm just showing I, I loaded a safe spot and it's it's first time I'm walking outside in the game. It's the game's using Unreal Engine, so it looks really good. In the game, you play as a, a girl who just turned 18, who's at a art school, well, photography art school. She Rachel and wine time. She looks so hopeful and pretty. In the first episode, we're just introducing cares and the power that she has of reversing time. Wait, and is this a game, game or a show? It's a game. I, I'm controlling her moving right now on the Steam controller, actually. And then there's a social aspect of like talking to this guy named Ward and her parents and stuff like that and the teacher. Right now she's walking around trying okay, to get the flash drive. Okay, I better get to my dorm and grab that flash drive. A point in the game. He's going to the dormitories to get it from her room. Brett can make comments of good stuff at any point. <laughs> It's <laughs> a big good stuff. <laughs> college right here. Yeah. Now this is another scene by the dorms. 
I don't know what I need to, to go say. to my room and return Warren's flash. Keep going, Aaron. Good uh, stuff, mate. Just, just keep, describe, say what, describe say what, what we can see. see. All right, so we're, we're, there's a curve by the door with the three girls who are uh, not nice people. Uh, okay. Oh, look, it's yeah. Max Caulfield, the selfie hoe of Blackwell. No. What a lame gimmick. Even Mark, Mr. Uh, Jefferson, kind of, falls kind of like she bullies, you know, that kind of attitude. Yeah, that girl right there is like barely a mean even say that. of them. And I like, guess you got your meds She's like filled. all friendly, friendly with the, the guy teacher that they're in the same class with. Okay. Since you know all the answers, I guess and you have to find another way to the dorm. You we saw ain't her say something. Oh wait. And then you were wanted time because you didn't know the answer, so you took the answer from her before. So original. Don't okay. worry, Max. I'll put a vintage photo. So it's one of those, that kind of two faced, multi faced no. person that's manipulative and devious. Oh yes, yeah. Victoria. I'll we get your bony ass out of my way. School, I think at some point or college. Oh yeah, I'm sure we do. I think this I think I did ended up the part where I tried to turn on the sprinkler system to make them leave because they wouldn't leave the door and let me into the building. So they turned the water on them. What the hell? Are you kidding? <laughs> so at this stage, this is kind of setting the scene. Is this like the backstory that's being played out? Well, this is episode one, so it's just the it's I can't even chill on the part, but then you, I'm controlling right now. And the water thing didn't really work. They just got up but didn't leave, so I couldn't get in the building still. Okay. And as, as you're going on, you can see that, oh, you need to do this. Rewind time and change this, and then they'll move. Oh, we had a cut scene. And... Oh, so, so you have that, so the game, in the game, you have that capability to be able to go forwards and backwards in time well, and kind back, of... Not forward. You have to let time go by its normal self. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, so you can basically on. repeat. You can repeat moments in life. Oh. Yes, it, it it helps because you make decisions in the game that will affect the other parts of the game too. Like in this one, somebody threatened someone to gun gun in the bathroom, and I said something to the principal, but he will remember that, and if he saw the text. He called my mom, but if I didn't tell him about it, he would call her, and she'd be worried that I'm doing something bad. I don't want to mess with that ladder and hurt poor Sam. Yeah, so you I know, just want to get Victoria the got, hell out of the way. Uh, pointed out, so if you do something to the paint can, it'll get them to move. Nice, okay, all right. And um, I'm just waiting right now for the sea where the guy is. I'm, I have to make sure to do it when he's not looking. So you're playing, uh, a, you're, you're playing a character in the first person then, are you? Uh, well, this point of view would be third person. Okay. From the eye point of view where you just see the hands and body and that's it. Not yeah. the whole body would be third person. Here it is. They instantly put out that you could see him hook it there and oh you should probably tamper that to make them move and now you see that you can actually turn the sprinklers on it doesn't give you an option to activate it this time around since this he's already over there you can't turn the sprinklers on i guess and now i'm just fast rewinding that before he even got up there And now he's over there, and he's not looking. So now it gives me an option to tamper with it. Oh, okay. Okay, let's see if this works. And she does talk to her head a little bit. Okay, let's see if this works. Still, you, now you can tamper it. What the hell? And now that they've moved into position, what the hell? Are you kidding? Look at that shield, Victoria. It's just water. Yeah, water on my. Oh wow, they're swearing at each other. Sounds cool. You look great. I can't even chill on the steps. And now that they're over there, 
and I've tampered with the paint bucket, it out comes yeah. a little bit differently. No way! No fucking way, Victoria! No way! No fucking way! Okay, Victoria? Oh, Sammy, you're Just sorry. Wait, wet paint is not good for hair, nope. Sorry. Get the hell away from me, weirdo! She's like freaking out that hold she on, got paint hold on. on her We'll get some towels, we'll be right back. So move your ass before I dry. It worked. Don't it's mess so with funny because outside bitches. she's like such a shallow, a shy person, but on the inside she labels herself as a bad, badass, I guess. Uh, hey, what do you want, Matt? Uh, this hey, is a part Victoria. that what do you, you can want, actually Matt? decide to be mean or nice to her since she was mean to you earlier. I am sorry. That's an awesome question. And what did you decide? Uh, I'm it too was. nice of a person. But there will be I another. To her. Well, you always seem to know how to pick the I right I wanted outfits. to. I could rewind it and change the outfit. I do have actually. some talent. Mr. Jefferson that told also me. I've seen your too. pictures. You have nice a great eye. Richard Avedon esque. I do have some talent. He's one of my heroes. Thanks, Max. You have a great eye. So that. I hope the those sluts get me a towel before they hang a sign on me. your decisions in certain parts. Okay. You deserve before another shot. Before she posted a picture of you Sorry about on blocking you and, and, and the, in the go game. fuck your selfie. And now that you are nice that to was her, mean, but pretty funny. Shield. One of those it. days, you know. I know exactly what you mean, Victoria. That was I'll see you later. Au revoir. One of those days, you know. And now you can go into the into the building to get the flashlight. Your action will have consequences. Mm -hmm. It revolves around what decisions you make. I think that's enough, don't you? Hmm. Okay. We're already over a bit. Yeah, no, that sounds really good, and uh, I, certainly yeah. I could hear how you were changing, how by changing the things in the scene, change the outcome of the way that the people behave, and that's kind of like, uh, it, it's intriguing, that's the word I'm looking for, you could hear that woman start swearing and getting all agitated, and you're immediately intrigued into, oh, what's going on there, what happens if I do this or the next thing, and um, so is that is that a direct, uh, directly installable game? Or, or do we get that through Steam, Aaron? It's through Steam. Okay. I'm making a soundboard right now. I'm just gonna put something on my website that I have under Git. But I'm gonna put something uh, put something on my website. It's probably gonna be tsimonkizu.net slash kubuntu soundboard, and it's basically oh, okay. Press buttons, press buttons, and it cues the sound. I don't okay, that sounds cool. Before, but yeah. All right, so we'll we'll grab a link from you, Simon, and we'll put that in the show notes as well, so uh, so that people can uh, can listen to my dulcet tones whenever they want to. Uh, maybe some people want to go out now and invent a drinking game. Um, if they do, see um, see a video for supplies of Palinka. <laughs> All right, okay, everybody. Well, as you know, well, of course, we've uh, we've overextended our stay of welcome once again, uh, but I've had really great fun today uh with you guys and it's it's great to have you back a video so glad you're back mate <laughs> good to be back <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah and uh good to be good to be hanging out with you again as well aaron okay <clears throat> so uh, this uh this next segment is dedicated especially to jim arvan who is keeping count currently we're at 27 good stuff good uh, stuff he knew it was coming Good stuff. <laughs> okay, so go visit our, our, um, our website, kubuntu.org. That's where you'll find all the news, all the information, all of this kind of stuff is all on the website there. Come down and join us in IRC. There are always loads of people hanging out on irc.freenode.net uh, in channel hash kubuntu. Um, we've got telegram groups as well and links to those are in the show, do show notes we've got telegram suits for kubuntu support which is the kubuntu channel and also for the kde or kubuntu cafe as well and um uh, you can find out all about those links in the show notes as well get in touch with us on social media google plus seems to be our primary platform but uh, you can find us on facebook on twitter 
on Reddit. And of course, you can catch up with each of us individually on LinkedIn. I think we've almost all got LinkedIn profile, so, so you can catch up with us there. Um, if you want to contact the podcast team, then follow Kubuntu Podcast on Google Plus. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You know it makes sense. So, um, Rick, Rick, Rick don't, don't forget to do the quote, do the, do the YouTube quote. Like, share, and subscribe. I don't need to do the YouTube quote because oh, you just did it. High five. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, and uh, big thanks to uh, all the people that came and hang out with us in uh, the Big Blue Button studio. Uh, you lovely people and ninjas, you know who you are. And a big thanks to Simon, who came and hung out with us tonight and did an impromptu interview. And uh, we're definitely going to get Simon back uh, to come and talk to us some more uh, about Snappy and some of the other stuff that's going on in the future. Okay, <clears throat> so thank you, Simon. Great to have you here and joining us, spending time with us on the podcast. All right, so I've had a great evening this evening once again. I love doing the podcast. It's great fun hanging around here in the Kubuntu community. Absolutely love it. So... Uh, Thank you for joining us. I've been uh, really enjoying it this evening. So I am Rick Timis, and I will see you next time. Over to you, Ovidio. Thanks for having us. Thanks for watching the show, and keep giving us feedback on the show and on everything we do related to Kubuntu, and maybe unrelated, whatever. Uh, and see you next time. Aaron here. Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks. Jim for always liking the stupidest of games and the most violent, which is a bit concerning. <laughs> <laughs> See you on the next one, guys.